COVID-19 is a magnifying glass that has highlighted the larger pandemic of racial or ethnic disparities in health. A black infant born in the U.S. is more than twice as likely to die before his or her first birthday compared with a white infant. In adulthood, black individuals have higher death rates than white persons for most of the leading causes of death. Compared with white individuals, African-American individuals have higher rates of uninsurance and underinsurance. COVID-19 testing centers are more likely to be in well-off suburbs or predominantly white residents than in low-income neighborhoods that are predominantly black. The advice to obtain testing through a primary care clinician limits access to testing for people who lack one. Wadera and colleagues show that risks linked to COVID-19 varied markedly by borough of residents in New York City. The Bronx had the lowest levels of income and education and the highest proportion of black and Hispanic persons. Although the Bronx had the highest rate of COVID-19 tests performed, it also had the highest rate of COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths. In contrast, Manhattan, the predominantly white, most affluent borough of New York City, had the lowest rates of hospitalization and death related to COVID-19, although it had the highest population density. Similarly, the viewpoint by Yancey notes that the disproportionate death rates for black persons in Chicago were concentrated in four neighborhoods. These data highlight that social inequities are patterned by place and opportunities to be healthy vary markedly at the neighborhood level. A clue to understanding the drivers of these differences is the 2010 census finding that the New York City area was the second most segregated metropolitan area in the U.S., behind Milwaukee and ahead of Chicago, Detroit, and Cleveland. Segregation is a critical determinant of economic status, which is a strong predictor of variations in health. In 2018, for every dollar of household income that white workers earned, black workers earned 59 cents and Hispanic workers 72 cents. Economic status matters profoundly for reducing the risk of exposure to SARS-CoV-2. Lower income and minority workers are overrepresented among essential service workers who must work outside the home when shelter-in-place directives are given. Many must travel to work on buses and subways. Exposure to interpersonal discrimination is also linked to chronic disease risk. Greater exposure to and clustering of stressors contributes to the earlier onset of multiple chronic conditions such as hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, and asthma, greater severity of disease, and poorer survival for African-American individuals than white persons. For example, exposure to air pollution has been linked to hypertension and asthma, as well as more severe cases and higher death rates due to COVID-19. Improving access to care for all and ensuring high-quality care with greater focus on under-resourced settings and vulnerable groups is an important treatment for racial disparities in health. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more health tips and updates.